bless and love my lords welcome to another punk talk what a delight to have today with us crypto pop punk and uh pop punk sorry <laughs> and uh, our co-host of course dudley welcome gentlemen how are you hey red lion i how are you i'm doing good it's pop punk <laughs> pop punk yeah I, I i just misspoke there it said crypto pop punk <laughs> I mean, some that. of us aren't lucky enough to have our usernames and at names be the same you know our names and our at names so i yeah I have that crypto thrown in front yeah very nice to meet you man uh we were going to have uh barcella here with us he's on an airport i don't know if he will be joining i think uh he will try to he sent me a late message now that it will be hard but uh that's fine we will try to have him also um but yeah thanks for joining very excited to meet you and have you here on the show today with us yeah i love being here i've heard really cool things about your podcast i was looking through some of your guests i know you actually put them on spotify which i think is or not just spotify but you put them out into the podcast world which i think is is pretty cool i think there's a lot of spaces that probably could use that but don't take the time so i think it's pretty cool you do that yeah, we are trying to create a super awesome guest list of a lot of people and uh, crypto punks and builders and the most uh, the best people of the space. And uh, yeah, we plan to invite them along many times to the shows. So maybe fut uh, future humans can uh, have a listen to us in many different parts of our lives and our building careers when they look at our projects. Uh, so yeah, this is the concept, but uh, thanks for being here and let's start how we always start um, with you sharing with us uh, your punk story. So I don't, I obviously I haven't heard a ton of them, so I don't know how unique mine is, but um, I got into it pretty late. Um, we're talking <sighs> summer, early summer twenty. 20. I'd been in crypto a long time. I'd literally made decks about NFTs, uh, marketplaces in early 2018. So I had an awareness of NFTs, but I had not got heavily into them. And I think it was Mike McDonald. I don't know if you know who that is. He's a poker player. I think he has a crypto. Oh, yeah, gift. I know him. He's a top yeah. player. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a great gambler um, and poker player. And now he has been into crypto quite a while. And he started um, sporting punks and I saw other poker players were doing it. So despite the fact I was like super into DeFi, I was totally living like the yield farming world at the time. I hadn't really looked at NFTs that much. And he's what prompted kind of some interest. And then eventually, I honestly think I might have bought a board Ape. I think I bought a... This is how far back it was. I, th I think I might have bought like uh, Mutant or the dog, the Kennel Club first. And then I think I bought a Punk and then I bought a Bored Ape. And then from there, I mainly bought Punks for a long time. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I think at one point I had seven at one time. Um, I ended up kind of when the bear started, I think I had uh, three. Um, and that's what I um, have today. But um, the community is amazing. I think it's one of the first like uh, my dogs may bark, but they'll generally quiet. I think it's one of the first kind of NFT communities I really got into. Honestly, it was kind of peak degen season. And so I almost had to kind of filter it out because literally every single day in punk chat, people were shilling um, like seven different projects and I was overwhelmed. So I kind of just stuck to punks because I literally couldn't be over. I couldn't like process the number of projects that were getting shilled. And at that point, everything was going up. So, I mean, people were pretty happy about it, but that's kind of my intro to punks, Mike McDonald, and then a little bit along the way. What was your entry price? Ooh, that is a good question. I believe I overpaid. I was new to it and I was one of those people, I don't know if this is common, but um, I overpaid based on traits. And I think the traits I got were decent. But I think I paid maybe 100 ETH for what probably should have been maybe like a 75 to 85. It was a nerd glasses with kind of that old style cap. I don't remember what that cap is called. 
nerd glasses and I think um, not beard, not a big beard. And I know at the time in punk chat, they were like, there were some like side eyes and things like that about the price I paid. And I think I bought it from, I can't remember who I bought it from, but yeah, that's, I think I paid like between 90 and a hundred for one that was probably more like a 75 to 85 at the time. Yeah, um, you you made a comment uh, that uh, you haven't heard the other guys uh, sharing their stories, and uh, this is fine because um, uh, listening so many people's stories uh, about their punks, uh, it kind of is great uh, therapy for me <laughs> and uh, <laughs> for, for everyone listening and feeling bad because uh, for a long time, you know, people had punks, they didn't know what they had, uh, or some did, uh, but some, you know, there has been mismanagement, of course, and some people sold, me included. So hearing all the punk, all the different punk stories has been very cathartic. And uh, yeah, there have been prices, 160 ETH. Uh, I can't remember who was it that was telling me they bought. Someone else bought at 120 so yeah, some others who claimed it or uh, under one it. So it is it is wonderful to hear all different, uh, you know, stories and people who found it and for how much and when they buy. What about you? When did you? I mean, you don't have to give the whole story if you don't want. But like, at what? Mm -hmm. You know, were you someone who claimed or bought early or what? When were you in? Uh, well, when I started, that was uh, in uh, twenty twenty. So at some point I started flipping, I had a, a little bit more money and then the whole punk craze started or was about to begin. So I went to Nate and uh, I bought like eight punks uh, all together or something like that. Amazing. Uh, I think that was late 2020. Yeah, it was like one and a half, 1.2 to one and a half per punk. Oh my, um, my first purchase i st <laughs> but they were plagued with uh, nate's cares i i i haven't got even one from that run <laughs> so yeah that was uh, that is my big but um yeah i mean like at the time we were buying selling this that it was uh, as you said it was mayhem uh it was crazy times uh, you mentioned you have dogs, right? A dog or a dog? Yeah, I've got the dogs. They're here in the office with me. Sometimes it's better to keep them here because if someone comes to the door of the main house, they go crazy. So, Okay, what what kind of dog do you have? We've got a German Shepherd Pit Bull Bulldog mix, mainly German Shepherd. And then I have an old uh, Yellow Labs, 12 years old. So oh, still getting around, but it's getting tougher, but he's still doing it. So he goes on walks and stuff. So he keeps mm -hmm. going. I have three. One of them is uh, 15 years old, but he holds up like a champion. <laughs> and uh, he's the boy, and the other two are females. Uh, Jack Russells. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah, two Jack Russell. One is uh, like an ancient uh, Greek breed. Um, all right, that is uh, that is very nice to hear. And how did you get to uh, choose your uh, big beard with the three D glasses? So I had um, a three D with a knit hat that looked very much like, and I don't remember his name. You probably know because you've done these. But the guy who um, was with Louis Vuitton. I think he was like the son. He's the one who's promoted like the pendants and things. I had one that looked exactly like his, I think. Maybe the shade was different and it had a mole. Um, and I had had that one for a while. I honestly bought it probably too high and had just kind of sat on it. And it was kind of one of my last, you know, the last three I had. And then, I don't know, I think it was like June or May. There was a ton of people buying 3Ds. Like 3Ds just kind of took off and someone like bought it. And so, I mean, that was when the price, uh, the ETH price was very low, you know, I think around a thousand. I know we're right around there now, but even lower. And somebody bought it. And I had probably four big beards in mind. I really like big beards. I've owned a few, but none. I was just like, oh, I absolutely love this. And this was one of them. And so I immediately, I think it sold for 130 ETH and I paid 140 for this one. And I just, I bought it like, you know, minutes after it sold. 
because this is kind of like this is one of three 3d big beards and it was kind of one of my absolute favorites at the time i kind of liked some of the other ones because they had more straight lines but honestly i've come to love this 3d big beard quite a bit and so i feel like it's kind of a forever punk but it's i haven't had that long i've had punks for i don't know like it's you know year and a half maybe but this one i've only had um since june before that i had kind of my forever punk was a Marilyn Monroe looking like blonde Bob. I don't know if Bob's right, but kind of shoulder length blonde hair, very pale with uh, the blue makeup. I still have that one, and it's definitely a favorite. I really like it, but this one's a fun one, and I it works with me. I have a big beard in real life, so it's all good. Oh, do you? <laughs> oh, okay. My wife doesn't like it, so I trim it, but it left my own devices. It would get pretty long. <laughs> I, I cannot uh, grow. Like, I, I have... Uh... Uh, facial hair but they don't grow long you know they just grow thick <laughs> but uh yeah the, the the big beard is one of the the top traits and of course uh, one of my favorites but your punk is uh extremely um striking and uh, the combo with the 3d glasses and You still there? It cut off a little for me for some reason. Yeah. Can you, you hear me, me Dada? Can you hear me, Popam? Popam? I can hear you. All right. All right. We lost Red somewhere in the void, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> Where we were at. Well, I think we were talking about big beards at the moment. You have a really cool punk. I love the mohawk on yours. Is that is the trait? Is that side mohawk? Is that what it's called? Yeah, you are like a two of it. I mean, I love it also on the red lines. So one, that's also like really charismatic one, kind of classic punk. Uh, yeah, he said phone died. Probably that's a. Uh, <laughs> forgot to charge the phone before spaces you know we're always stuck with uh, mobile phone connection only we're always always discussing uh, where desktop kind of podcasting on twitter will come but yeah so he's gonna be with us in a minute so so yeah how many punks you had uh, in total you said i'm not just but i'm at three now three now okay that's still quite a lot. <laughs> I got only one floor price uh, punk, but still happy to be part of the punk community. So Absolutely, and I'm not, I'm definitely not like, you know, I think, I honestly, a lot of the people I communicate with online, are, you know, don't even have punks. So I'm not, I love punks and I love traits and I love that there's so much interest around them. And I think it's cool people get them and like them, but. I'm definitely not like, oh, you need a really cool avatar. Yeah, I was really lucky. I got my punk thanks to Red, actually, because we just started with the Gazette, and uh, I knew him, I don't know, for like two months, maybe max. And he approached me on one day. He was like, really quick, quick, send me for it. You know, uh, Pranksy is having this uh, punk draw uh, lottery. So if you want a ticket, send me for it quick, you know? So I was like, okay, I will have a punk. So... Let's do it for it. Back then it was, I don't know, 300 per eat. So I got my punk for uh, 1200. It's not bad, right? So <laughs> that's amazing. Was there a lottery and you got lucky or yeah, did yeah, yeah, no, no. It was like a, it's, it's a developer. Uh, it's a, it's actually Def Punk. It's the one of the 1000 first IDs. So my punk is uh, 200, uh, it's 214. Oh, so, cool. Uh, actually, Pranksy was buying 150 of these punks from Larva Labs, and he collected uh, the money for acquiring these punks from Larva Labs. Back then, it was uh, spring 2020, I suppose. And everyone can participate, not everyone, basically everyone who knows someone who, knows, uh, who knew Pranksy could uh, participate in this lottery, and you bought a ticket. And then he uh, drew the the punks, you know, IDs to to these addresses. So it was really random uh, who got uh, which punk. So 
I mean, I could get I could get a blonde. I could get three uh, D glasses. I think there was one of uh, maybe aliens. I don't know if there was an alien in the in the draw. I cannot remember. But there were really like a high value banks in the in the lottery, you know. So yeah, I end up with this clean one. Uh, but still, you know, it's a developed bank. I love him. It's a clean look. So uh, yeah, that's cool. Okay, uh, I think we have red bag. I'm just uh, gonna invite him. Let's uh, give me a second. Okay, yeah. So that's my punk story. It's uh, straightforward, but still, uh, it's like a fun because we also did the graphics for uh, the lottery. I think you can find it still on OpenSea as a token, uh, as like a ticket to this lottery. You know, so I messed that on a lot of that early NFT history. I mean, that had to be. That had to be a pretty interesting time for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was super newbie back then. You know, I couldn't probably appreciate what punk is. And uh, yeah, so Red, you with us, man? Yeah, apologies. Uh, I don't know why uh, Twitter crashed my phone, so I had to restart. But I think now everything is uh, working fine. Um, I'm sorry yeah, about call that. Mask, yeah. Call mask. Call <laughs> mask. I will call. I, I will call hey, Elon. Elon. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I was just saying that uh, the the whole uh, punk that you have is super striking. The traits are uh, amazing. Uh, excellent choice, and the way you uh, you weaved it with the persona pop punk, I think it's a, it's an excellent match. I appreciate that. Yeah, I originally kind of did it as a pop art reference, but everyone thinks it's about um, like pop punk music, which is cool, too. I love all music and mm -hmm. I can name a few bands, but I frequently get asked, what are your favorite pop punk bands? And, you know, that works, too. Yeah, uh, that's why we played the little pop music at the start, but it wasn't. Uh, oh, perfect. <laughs> it was just like medleys and covers uh but uh yeah it's very i actually liked it it was a little bit r and a little bit i liked yeah. it um so uh why don't you go ahead and tell us what projects are you involved and um uh what pro or what projects do you support let's talk a little bit about that sure absolutely so um beginning of this year um i got kind of an idea of doing a project around surfers um, I was, grew up landlocked. I was grew up kind of in the middle of the U.S. We didn't have a lot of money, but we spent a lot of time at a local lake. And so, you know, we didn't have surfing, but we were swimming, water skiing. You know, if we could find someone who had a boat, we didn't have one. We were doing all those things. And then as I got older, um, I got to travel a little bit. And, you know, when I first got to the ocean, I was just fell in love. I love the vastness of it. I love swimming. I love floating. And then from there, gotten some water sports. I'm mean, definitely a super novice, like um, surf school surfer. I am not like if when I go out, I generally go with instruction because I'm still, you know, learning. I just can't go out anytime. And I'm also still in the middle of the U.S. So I'm landlocked. So it's not like I'm doing it every day. But I was very into surfing. I'm very into the history of Hawaii and kind of how surfing in the Polynesia and things of that nature. And so I uh, started working, talked to a lot of artists, and I found one, Seth Soto, that I really um, dug, and we really worked well together. And so we started uh, developing it and then ultimately launched New Wave Surf Club. So that is uh, the project um, that I work on um, in particular. So we're definitely a giant group chat in kind of this days when Discord can be a little quiet. Um, our Discord stays pretty busy, especially when all the world's around, you know, late North America time, not as much, but, you know, this time of day and a little earlier, pretty active. But we also, our main focus is on NFT security. So, you know, I talked about I hadn't been into NFTs, you know, that long. I was into crypto for a long time and still am. Um, I mean, for me, it's a long time. I celebrated 10th anniversary, December 1st. So in December 2012, was when I bought Bitcoin. And I mentioned that to say in part because when the bull run happened in 2014, um, I was like, oh shit, I actually need to figure out how to protect this stuff. I literally had was it, it like a, Was it the, the first present. time Bitcoin went to 1K from 200 or something? Yeah, I think that I think that is accurate. When I got excited, I, I think it was its run to about, yeah, 12, I think it got all the way up to like 1200 or something like that. So that was one of the, like I held for, 
you know, a while and then it started going up and up and then it just went up like crazy to almost like $1,200. And then, you know, we had, we had like three years or it didn't even, I don't even think it got near that number. We were back down in like the two and three hundreds for, you know. Yeah, I this is when I bought. Like when is that when you bought? Yeah, when it went from 1K to 200, this is mm -hmm. when I found it. So that was the price I found it. I'm like, that's super expensive, but I'll buy it. <laughs> You know, it's all relative. I know, you know, now it's down, you know, crypto in general is down considerably, but it, you know, it's totally relative. If you're buying ETH at $10 or if you're buying Bitcoin at 200, you know, it just kind of, it, you know, it still went up. Well, it you depends how much money up. you have at the time. At the time, like I couldn't afford much, you know, it was the first time in my life I had 7K in the bank. And I felt like King fucking Kong, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, bring that fucking Bitcoin. I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a good amount to buy. That's pretty much, that's similar. I didn't, I didn't have a ton of money either, or at least I didn't feel like I did. And like one of my regrets is I had friends who were putting like $10,000 into Bitcoin um, at the time. And I put in like $130 for my first buy. So I bought <laughs> I bought 10 Bitcoin for $13 each. And I, you know, I don't, I don't regret a ton. Like my life is, is fine. It's fulfilling. But of course, anybody who's been in crypto or even NFTs for more than a couple of months starts to have some regrets. Like, you know, why didn't I buy that project or why didn't I buy one of those? And I have lots of them. Like literally uh, if I look for now, I probably have a hundred. Yeah. But you know, hindsight is the only perfect science, right? Yeah, I totally agree. And I've, I think one of the benefits is I kind of got over those. I'm probably not as FOMO as most people just because I've been around so long. I realize you're going to miss some stuff. And honestly, you have to have the conviction to hold for a long time anyway. So you better you better be pretty sure about what you're buying and purchasing. So I have lots of regrets, but I don't let, let them kind of hold me down. But speaking of, I think, yeah, New Wave Surf Club. So I just want to mention the security part because I think it's a pretty big one. So what we've done is because I started early, I'd learn my own stuff. And then I advised uh, early Bitcoin whales on their security, some venture funds, um, a few um, startups. And that kind of once NFTs, I got into them about a year ago, even more. Um, I started doing security spaces. And then with the New Wave Surf Club, I actually created um, with the community. We had lots of contributors from the community to an hour uh, NFT security course. So we teach it in our own Discord. Um, we take it to other um, communities. Like we're, you know, we're pretty agnostic about this course. Like if there's a community out there who wants us to come in and teach it, we literally do it in their Discord for free. Uh, shout out, oh, Cleet's in the audience. Uh, Vuz, that Jay, that cat, Keanu, is in the audience. Mention him. Uh, that cat, I call him Jay. Um, he's brought our uh, class to like three or four different communities. So we have people in our new wave surf club community who literally you know talk up our class and like bring it to others so it's allowed us i think we're about up to four we've gone to 40 communities now and done the class and i think it's been highly impactful like some people you know if you've been around a decade maybe you know you have a super understanding of it i will say the people who haven't been in nfts but have been around a long time often don't have the knowledge that sometimes people in nfts do just because nfts have gotten targeted so um, heavy that I think if you understand, you know, the NFT space, you can also use that knowledge in DeFi and other things too. Because honestly, there are more scams in NFTs than about anything at the moment. Man, I, I like the the message and the education mission behind your uh, Wave Surf Club. Um, we definitely are going to write about it. I will link you up with our editor, Stephen. Uh, we should definitely write more about it and. Uh, you know, put on the spotlight the, the people that are doing this education uh, to other communities because these are the unsung heroes, right? Um, I definitely can relate uh, when, when the cause is uh, so good and it's about education because it's very similar to what we do. Um, the, the whole vibes are uh, really cool and, uh, you know, the mission is, is great. Um, we saw the whole world getting hacked the past, I would say, four years. Uh, every major Web2 entity or almost everyone got hacked. 
uh, databases breached, uh, data stolen, private information. Uh, we've seen it all, one after the other, they are falling. And the same trend we see on Web3, but I would say it's a little bit different. Uh, besides the backdoors, the hacks, the rags, and all of that, there are protocols that are running super safe and they have been guaranteeing a lot of money for a long time now. But uh, we see a lot of rugs, a lot of scams, a lot of people losing uh, their assets. So safety and personal security definitely is paramount in this uh, new digital age. Do you think that people are taking their digital security lightly in general? I think honestly, you know, like I'm, I'm one of those people who thinks the bear market might last a while, and that's kind of. So I don't think you know we're we're, we're anytime soon we're going to flip. But I will say, people who are still here, like the people out in the audience, I mean, you've put in some time in a bear market. Like if you're still here now and you found ways that are sustainable for you to stay in the space, I think you have a good shot. You know, building this whole time, doing art. Um, being part of the community. So I'm, you know, hats off to all of you for being here because it's not been, you know, there's not the hype that there's been in the past. And I say that to just say people who have been here this long, I think they do take security at least a little bit seriously. They might not have necessarily taken a class, but they try to pick stuff up. And the reason why I like the class in particular is because there's lots of kind of hearsay and, you know, memes and things around security. And a lot of them are true. But also, I think if you just have like an hour base class where you kind of get the overview, you understand, you know, the basics of seed phrase and wallets, you understand operational security, and then you understand common scams, maybe learn a little about hardware wallets. Um, I think that it's such a good base that you can then go out and, you know, build on it easier than just like, oh, here's another thread, I'll read part of the thread or I'll read the whole thread, but then I'm on to, you know, you know, this PFP or art project. I think it helps to have a base. But I do think in general, and I hang out with a lot of artists, I think they take, um, they take it pretty seriously. It's just a matter of some people don't have the means to get hardware wallets. In the NFT space, you know, hardware wallets are not the end all, like most of the scams happen independent of hardware wallets. So, well, I think they're totally important and needed and everybody should get them if they can. Like it's not enough. Like approvals and signature scams are probably the biggest um, stealer of NFTs right now, I would say. And you see that in punk chat, too. I, I don't get to hang out there as much as I did in the past, but it's still one of the places I go. And, you know, you see targets like I'm sure uh, Red Lion, I, you and Dudley probably saw or maybe you didn't, but everybody got airdropped that um, Punk's portrait pass, which is, a you know, Punk's portrait's a legit project, um, but uh, scammers stole all their art, airdropped this pass to all Punk's holders, and literally there were people posting in Punk chat, they got all the way to the approval screen, and the, it was approval for uh, autoglyphs, which is, you know, a very high value, very old NFT. So, you know, I don't think they fell for it in particular, but I have certainly seen punks fall for it. And to be fair to punks, um, I think we have a lot of the most OG people there are, but we also have um, NFTs that are not uh, ERC721. So a lot of the common scams don't apply to us literally because we don't have the same type of NFT that everybody else has, which has allowed, I think us, one, we have a lot more experience in general, but two, we also literally have a token that the scammers are usually you know, not targeted or unable to with like their off the shelf software. Well, yeah, uh, totally agree, man. And thank you. Uh, so how can, uh, if a community is interested to get uh, in contact with you and have, uh, I don't know, do you do it in the form of a seminar on their server? Um, how do they, how do they get in touch and uh, get this organized? I would say generally you could just at mention me on Twitter, but right now there's an art share going on with some other artists who are curating and my mentions are totally shot. So I think probably the best is uh, if it's any other day, you can probably at mention me. But um, if you go to the New Wave Surf Club uh, Discord, which is in my link tree, uh, you can find it there. It's one of the three links. Uh, if you go in there and just 
you know, at mention me in general, or you open a ticket there, that's probably best. Um, if you don't get around to it and you at mention me on another day, I would probably see it because I do kind of live on Twitter and Discord. But yeah, if you just get a hold of us, if you want to be for sure, go to Discord, our Discord and open a ticket. But we've absolutely, like I said, we've done this for 40 communities. So we're very used to doing it. It's, you know, it's an hour of time. We've kept adding slides, so it's harder to be just an hour, but we're still right around an hour. And, you know, it's an event. Like people who treat, people who like are like excited about it and promote it, uh, generally their, their community is pretty excited and actually finds value in it. And I put out tweets before that I've had, you know, I've had Bitcoin whales who have been in this space longer than me, you know, get something out of the class. Not that they hadn't heard some of it before, but maybe there was, you know, some techniques and things that they hadn't considered before, or some risk factors. So I, I definitely don't think it's it's something where you'd be like, oh, I've been here two years, I've been here five years. You know, I generally exclude people who teach security courses, people who are security developers and think about crypto a lot, and certainly developers in general in this space. Like you probably have a better understanding than I do of some of these things. But in general, I think most people can get something out of it. Wow, I would love to link you up. I don't know if you have done, you said you did uh, 40 projects already. Um, I would like to link you up if you haven't done Genuine Undead. I think this is something that they would definitely be interested as their uh, value uh, rises and they love their project. They, um, they will be targeted and they are being targeted already by scammers. So I think this would be a nice, you know, uh, education for the community, a good uh, tip, you know, uh, to watch out and what to do and how to, to stay safe, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I know Genuine Undead. I've heard, I don't own any, but I definitely know the name. And I know if they even get a hint that there's a chance to raid, they will raid. So they've represented, <laughs> they've represented in some of my threads before. And um, I, I have actually, like, some of them have stuck around and have become, you know, at least online acquaintances. So love to do one. If you have, you know, we can follow up. I know we follow each other. I'd love an intro oh. over there and be happy to do it. And I have, I have templates I can send so that they can know exactly what it is so they can make decisions, you know, yay or nay on it. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I'm noting it down. I will uh, definitely link you up. Um, what about your uh, wallet collection? What do you like to collect and what do you keep in your wallet? What uh, do you love to buy? What do you love to support? So um, I, like many people, I own a lot of PHPs. Uh, you know, I was involved in all of the kind of that mania. I did end up selling a lot um, before the Super Bowl this year. I don't know why I think the Super Bowl was meaningful to me for some reason. So... I did, was fortunate to sell a lot. I kept it all in ETH, so it's not like I, you know, I, but um, I still hold lots of PFPs. I'm really probably most passionate about, um, obviously, the surfers. That's my biggest thing. And I'm a collector at heart, so I collect my own project, too. Like, I absolutely, I just get the bugs for certain projects and cannot help myself, and so I definitely collect that. But I collect a lot of um, one of one art and just like, I don't know if fine art's the right term, but like additions, people are out there creating some of the, you know, top art in the space from kind of their own mission and philosophy. So, you know, photographers, illustrators, um, you know, all manner of AI, but definitely kind of that space is what I put a lot of my time in because I find it, I like, I have a, I have a long lay history in art. Like I'm not like an art professional at all, but I've appreciated art since I was, um, in high school and college and have continued it all throughout time. So very little formal, but definitely an appreciation. And, you know, art and a lot of those artists will tell you that I also have a bias to photography. I love photography. I probably buy more photography um, than anything else, but I do buy um, other art as well, abstract. I would say my, as a collector, I am not like a, I'm not like somebody who's buying often on super rare. I'm generally looking in kind of that, you know, 0.05 to one ETH range when I buy, and I do buy lots of additions as well. I also buy on, on Tezos, which I think is a fun place to be. So um, I like to find artists that are not necessarily up and coming. A lot of them are very established artists, but who I just um, think I really particularly vibe with their work. I think it has potential. I want to support it. I think a lot of it also has potential 
um, financially. So that's kind of what what I tend to buy. I, I buy more volume than I probably do, you know, very specific pieces, but I absolutely enjoy it. And I will say, as someone who spent the last, mm, before NFT Twitter, I spent like eight years in um, crypto Twitter. And believe me, like it is so much, I know it's like rough and many artists can't sell and I empathize with all of that, but NFT Twitter for me is so much more pleasant than crypto Twitter as a whole, just because, you know, you get to look at art, you get people who are creating things at a very, like, at a very, like, personal level, whereas in crypto Twitter, you know, you're, there's a lot of shit posting, talking about the price every day, and I just don't think looking at the price at times like these is going to sustain you, like, you have to, uh, you have to shit post or make, or, you know, at least do memes or something, but I, I have a lot of respect for crypto Twitter, and I still, you know, read it, and there are lots of people where there's overlap, but I just think, like, NFT uh, Twitter is an amazing place to be, especially in a bear market as, you know, we're working through it, because you have a lot of people who are creating really interesting projects and art, you know, all the way through it, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, wow, I'm, I'm a bit surprised about this answer, and uh, I will explain you why. Uh, I used to say... Um, about uh, crypto photography that it's definitely very respected and definitely has a bright future but it has a bit uh, photography as an art form has been a little bit neglected in terms of like international interest i mean you don't know a lot of like photography collectors it's just like art collectors usually also buy uh, some photography so thank you for proving me wrong there. <laughs> I didn't expect that. And I love to see that uh, people exist that um, will uh, gravitate towards uh, photography mainly and crypto photography, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I would say it's definitely not, you know, for people who are just like, you know, looking historically, like photography has historically not been like a huge money maker in art, as you're saying. Um, but I definitely think there's you're seeing different trends, like definitely a little, I don't get a ton of like, um, I don't get a ton of involvement in like the art world, but definitely I have some in real life curators at museums who I'm friends with and things of that nature. And they're definitely seeing an, an interest increase among their, um, you know, constituents, people who go to museums and people who are putting up money for exhibitions around photography. And I personally, I um, love that. I think amazing things are done in photography. I honestly like all art, but I just know that I have a bias. Like you're saying, a lot of um, people don't, but I do have kind of a bias to photography. I'm also like, I'm trying to learn on my own as well. Like I am like a super novice photographer, but I um, I am very fortunate to learn from a lot of the photographers in this space. So that probably biases me um, a little as well. And also, it's something that I know just enough about to maybe appreciate more, whereas with an illustrator or something like that, um, I'm still kind of, I'm learning a bit about at least the craft part. Like, I've appreciated art for so long that I think I have appreciation for and can make some evaluations, but I'm still a relative novice for sure when it comes to the space. Yeah, uh, photography is also a little bit misunderstood, you know, because uh, the ease of technology, everybody can like make a, uh, make shoot a photo. Um, they think it's the same thing, but it really isn't. And photographers have long and difficult processes in order to make this art that you visually see that for you, it's just a second, you're just watching it, but it's the result of like, years of education and practicing and um, paying to learn, <laughs> you know, it is it is a grind and it is a hard and uh, difficult art form. My brother is a photographer. He takes uh, photos of uh, products, mainly food. <laughs> for, That's a hot uh, area. Yeah, for delivery apps. <clears throat> I guess you got to have them done. Like good food probably moves, moves move sales <laughs> yeah his uh, his photos are actually the best he does the best job so they are always uh, uh preferred to get him and the other photographers are getting jealous he told me 
<laughs> so yeah, uh, you see the craft matters, even if you're taking uh, food uh, photographs, right? Uh, people do appreciate them. <laughs> Um, you mentioned Tezos earlier. Uh, Tezos is uh, has cultivated an amazing community around arts. Uh, a lot of super interesting artists. Drops are very uh, affordable. As you said, you want to buy. Uh, you prefer to buy a lot of editions for a cheaper price. That is very closer to my style. I do some like exclusive shopping, but I mainly prefer my asymmetric bets to buy early, as you said, uh, something a little bit cheaper, maybe. Um, so what uh, what has your experience been in Tezos and uh, what uh, how do you spend your time there? I mean, a lot of it is, I will admit, like my approach is very Twitter heavy. So I do lots of art chairs. I actually did, um, I organized an art chair that was called Punks Collect. Um, it was seven other punks and me who all kind of simultaneously promoted a hashtag related to it. Obviously, there are many punks um, who collect. I just picked some who um, were of interest, who I knew were very active, and I obviously missed lots of people um, like yourself. But um, Azuro, uh, Kaepernick, uh, Justin in photography, and there were a number of others that I'm, oh, Artie was in there, um, was doing it. So I'm very Twitter heavy in what I do, but then also once I follow an artist, like I, I'll follow them and or bookmark them, I'll use the follow tab. I have lots of artist friends who share work. So that's kind of my discovery, the process a bit. I've actually had, um, I'm very quick to like buy multiple editions on Tezos and then, you know, immediately list them 10 to 20 times, especially ones that are like, um, you know, the limited ones that people are going to burn. But, you know, they do like 111 something and then they burn. And I've actually had quite a few resales. Cleet is in the audience. Cleet um, is a collaborator with me and a great artist. Uh, we do a weekly um, thematic art chair thread that's on a particular topic. And I literally bought like three of Cleet's pieces and I put one up at like 20 times and lo and behold sold. And that happens quite a bit amazingly, probably because the prices are so low to begin with. So I've had, you know, that keeps me going in um, Tezos plus it is, you know, like I cannot, I do not have the type of wealth that allows me to just buy anything I want um, and eat. But I have um, the, you know, the standard of living that I can buy on Tezos pretty widely without worrying too much about it and so for me it's just so fun to buy stuff especially that i like there um in general you know especially low cost edition so it's fun i also try to make choices there and learn things and learn about artists and then look at their work on other chains as well but i've been definitely impressed and i've literally probably only been on there for like five months so i know literally the history goes back you know five what are we up to like is it five six years i mean they had there was so much early activity. I have only been part of a very, you know, a very limited time on it. Yeah, what they what they achieved there is uh, really cool, man. And um, the the community goes deep, as you said. The art is uh, really good. And um, what you mentioned that you buy stuff and you sell twenty times higher. That takes me back, man. To my first days on NFTs when uh, I was flipping stuff on Rarible for, uh, you know, a tiny profit, some a little bit larger, but uh, yeah, <laughs> humble beginnings. So this is how I started basically flipping art, you know, and complaining You're about not doing... Was it like one of ones, like exclusives or? Oh, no. It's... Hey, we are back. Apologies for that. It was a Twitter rug. Um, it happens. Um, so, uh, what we were saying? Uh, where were we? Uh, can you remind me, Dudley? I think you were talking about your. You were mentioned. I asked you about your rareable days and what you were flipping. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you took me back there with uh, your reply um, about uh, how how you flipped uh, how you flip art in there. So. I, I love that part. <laughs> it takes me back. I can definitely relate. 
and it's a very viable way to also you know uh, keep buying more and more art and uh, you know uh, keep funding your collection basically so uh, I, I I really like it um, because also it keeps people activated in the space they buy they sell they look this collection they look for that they they, they keep active you know buying and holding is uh, also good if you can afford it but you know it is a little bit passive yeah i totally agree i i mean i think and i've recommended to people i know lots of people and you know now it's maybe not the time to do it but there were a lot of people kind of during the NFT bull run who never sold anything. And I just recommend, you know, selling just for the experience, like see if you like it. Like I know it's some, some people it's, it's literally a technological barrier. They've never sold anything. And so they just don't do it. I just think people should sell a little just for the experience of using the software and seeing what it feels like to sell. I've certainly held lots of stuff for a long time. I hope eat like crazy through, you know, what has it gone down? When like, did you get into ETH? Um, I was buying ETH. I was buying ETH on Coin. Uh, coin. God, I can't remember what centralized exchange is called. Um, what's the one in the U.S.? Coin. Coinbase. Coinbase. I, I was buying. I was dollar cost averaging in uh, ETH that started at eight dollars. And so I did not get in on like IPO or anything like that. But I remember when I started buying it in Coinbase, it was around eight dollars. Well, that's uh, that's around when uh, I started looking at it. I wanted to buy it at ten, then it went to thirteen. I said I will wait, and I bought at eighty, ninety dollars. It was awful experience. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, so, uh, about the punk community, what is the number one thing that you like and got you captivated uh, as a as a punk owner? Um, I think it was the first community I had really been in Discord that I kind of liked, to be honest. Like, I had been in lots of um, DeFi and crypto before that, and I don't know, it just wasn't, I just, I don't know what, what to say. Some of it, literally, they talked about things I wasn't interested in. Some of it, there was never, like, like enough people to come together. And the one good thing about, like, the Punks Discord um, is that it stays pretty active even in a bear market. Like there's enough people who come in and hang out. And I think you get to talk to some interesting people. I will say like just naturally, you know, often people who have punks are not the most engaging on Twitter. And it may be because, you know, they have lives outside of that that are very busy or it may be, you know, they're hanging out with, uh, I don't know. But in general, before I had a punk, I, and even when I had one, I just didn't get that much engagement from people who had punks. So, but in, you know, Discord chat, you certainly get that. On Twitter, sometimes it's going to be a little less. But I understand people have busy lives. Like, you want to talk about, I've organized quite a few, not about big ones, but I've organized some art share threads. Like, organizing seven punks, to all come together at the same time and to actually like talk to each other and think that we did co-tweeting too and actually get them to do it. That was actually a lot of work. I'm not saying it was like hurting cats, but you know, it was, it was a little tough. So, I mean, that's a small thing. That's not like a project. The thing I think punks, a lot of them do, and it depends, but the active ones, they have projects like you do, you know, you're out there doing things, you have projects you're involved in and that takes a lot of time. And that's probably why, you know, there might be a little less engagement just overall. But I think punks are really cool. There's so many interesting ones. I literally have punk chat up on my computer right now. And um, Suzanne, All City. And I I hung out in the lab, too, as well. Not as much anymore. But there was lots of interesting people who didn't even have hold punks there. So I just kind of enjoyed um, that atmosphere. And then I just think punks are like, I like the punk style. I like, I'm a trait person and you can go crazy over traits with punks. Um, so that's kind of what I was interested. When I was, I own Board Ape, uh, I own the Board Ape Yacht Club and I own some of the honoraries as well. And honestly, when I ha hung out in their um, Discord, it was bro this, bro that. I, you know, partied so hard last night, I couldn't stand, which doesn't mean you can't have fun in your life. It just isn't where I was at in my life as someone who was probably 40 at the time. Like, 
I was just looking for something different. And I understand you had lots of young people of mining are buying board apes and there's nothing wrong with that. And there are some amazing board apes. Um, I didn't mention it, but I also am a contributor to Boring Security, which is actually literally funded by uh, the ape DAO, like the money um, they fund, you know, felled and quit and people like myself, they teach classes as well and do articles on security. And that's literally funded by, you know, what Board Ape Yacht Club and you go through their DAO. So um, that is not to knock any apes whatsoever. I've met a lot of cool ones. Yeah, they definitely need a little bit more security, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, <laughs> for sure. Um, all right, that's uh, great, man. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, it was an absolute uh, pleasure chatting today with you and getting to know you. Uh, we didn't have Barcelo on the, so on the show. We will have him uh, on the next one. And, and as I said, uh, we will be uh, super happy to link you up with uh, some other communities to do you uh, some uh, security uh, seminars and also write an article about uh, your wonderful project and your great mission. Um, so please uh, do pop in uh, to the show again in the future so we check what, uh, um, what is in your mind at the time. Hello, this has been so awesome, Red Lion. Like, um, cool questions. Honestly, I don't get to talk about punks that much, and so it was fun to kind of reminisce and to hear some history. I think that's one cool thing. There are so many punks who have been here a long time. You know, I might have been in crypto for a while, but literally the NFT history stuff, like from pretty much 2018 to 2020, aside from what I've read and researched, is a black hole to me. So I find that I find that kind of stuff particularly interesting. You know what people are into. Your story about flipping stuff on Rarible and what you know what the popular things were like that. So I absolutely loved hearing all that. Thank you, thank you so much for coming, and thanks everyone for listening and being here. Tomorrow we're coming back with an amazing, uh, with another amazing live interview. We're going to have Mr. Eclectic Method here with us. Thanks everyone for being here. Have a wonderful evening. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Really appreciate it. Thanks for your support.